Neil Brown just has that it factor, I believe. He's like, called into the program. Everybody in the Big 12 is going to know his name, and all the quarterbacks are going to feel his pain. That underdog so, mentality has always been big for West Virginia. We're just heartbroken that we were not good at our jobs. He is the modern-day Don Nealon. Trust the climb. And now it's time for the Country Roads Webcast. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into the Kansas Preview Edition of the Country Roads Webcast. As always, I'm your host, Jordan Cruz. Uh, no Steve in today, but we do have our other co-host, Bradley, here. What's up, everybody? Mountaineers uh, fighting for their bowl game lives, and uh, they get one chance to go to a bowl game. Got to go down to Lawrence, beat Kansas uh, on the 27th this Saturday. Night game going to be on uh, Fox Sports 1 there in Lawrence. Um, hopefully the Mountaineers can get a get a W. Uh, opening thoughts you got here, Bradley, for this matchup against Kansas. Yeah, so it's still Kansas. Uh, so I was just looking at their statistics when we talk about it, how Kansas is giving up 43 points a game right now. So that, that bodes well for us. And I think this is really going to come down to if we can um, – if our defense is going to stay healthy. I mean, I know we're pretty hurt back there, so I think that's pretty big and why uh, Texas is able to run the ball on this uh, there towards the end of the game this weekend. And so I'm hoping as long as our defense can stick in there and our offense can be productive, then I think we got a good chance of winning this game. It's definitely a scarier Kansas team than what we've had to deal with. So yeah, Kansas two two and nine on the season, but I think two wins is almost overachieving for that coach. I think one would have been good, but they've won two, including beating Texas, and then they were right there with against TCU last week, just couldn't quite pull it out. But another thing I looked at is they're also giving up two hundred fifty yards on the ground, and I think that's uh, going to bode well as we've talked about before. You know, West Virginia after the Texas game now twelve and zero uh, when going for over hundred yards under Neil Brown since he took over in twenty nineteen and. Letty Brown, you know, had a big day, and I think he really wants to get to a bowl game. He wants, you know, to win these last two, and you could tell he was running hard and stuff. Uh, you know, this last preview, regular season preview show of the year, so I figured about pull down Letty Brown's jersey and wear it one more time for a preview while I can. Um, you know, hopefully it's not our last preview. Hopefully yeah. we're doing a bowl game preview Rep too. It. But uh, I think it's going to be a good day for Letty. So, you know, uh, with that being said, let's talk about that matchup, the West Virginia offense versus the Kansas defense a little bit. Um, Jarrett Dagey had it. You know, we saw good – Jarrett Dakey again against Texas. I think there's a good chance we'll get to see that again against Kansas. Um, there was some a tweet that Jed, Jed Drenning put out uh, talking about since Oklahoma State. Let me see if I can find that. I had it on here uh, somewhere. Yeah, Jed Drenning's been putting out some good yeah. stuff this year. Here it He's is. Really um, on top of it. He says the offensive line and tight ends since struggling against Oklahoma State has bounced, WV bounced back the last two weeks with its two highest-graded PFF pass protection performances in a conference game since 2017. So the past two games are the highest-graded uh, pass blocking we've had since 2017. And I think that's big because we've talked about the young, the youth of the offensive line mm -hmm. and how they're only going to continue to get better uh, moving forward. And as well as Jarrett Dagey, when he has time, that's when we get good Jarrett Dagey. So um, I think that we got a chance to see that with this matchup. And uh, what do you think about the offensive performance uh, – you know, when you look at a stat like that and uh, what they can do against Kansas, Brad. Yeah, and I think that's something that I've been preaching all year is how young our offensive line is. We don't have a single senior. We're returning all four, uh, all five of our offensive linemen. Um, and I, I think I don't think we're going to lose any alignment to the offense or offensive linemen to transfer portal this year. I don't think that's just a position where you see guys transfer out as much. Um, so I'm hoping we can still keep Jaquay Hubbard, Jordan White, and uh, – you know, them back there to still keep our bowl strength. Cause like we said, we need depth in that position really bad, but yeah, that's super encouraging to hear. Cause you got to think 2017 is even Will Greer's first year um, uh, here. So between his first year and his second year, it's still the two highest graded offensive performances we've had. So that's, that's definitely reassuring considering we are still, we've given up no sacks out of any school uh, team in the big 12. We're sitting at 24 right there tied with Oklahoma. And I think that the more that our offensive line sinks together, the better off our football team is going to be. And going forward next year, no matter who's behind or uh, under center, whether it's Jared Dagu or Nico Markio, I think that that really bodes well for our team in general. No, I agree. I think so. I think the offensive line is what uh, 
people are counting out when they're thinking, oh, we're not going to get any better and stuff because I think Steven was the one that mentioned it on the reaction show. That's been a reason for a lot of the struggles this year. But also as the year has gone along, long, you've seen, despite when we played really great defenses like Oklahoma State, our, uh, run, our run blocking's gotten better, our pass protection's gotten better because these guys have gotten to play together for a full year. And I think that's one big reason why after the bye week, they've pretty much played those five offensive linemen exclusively. They're like, hey, these guys are all young. They all have at least two to three years left to play. Let's let them play together. Go, th- go through the lumps, but they're going to start gelling, and hopefully they start gelling quick. And if so, it's going to be big because they're going to have full off season together. And then, like I said, two or three more years. So, uh, yeah, the offensive line's growth, I think, has, has been evident for sure. And I think that continues against Kansas. I think that West Virginia's going to have a good day offensively, and hopefully the defense continues what they've done, even though they're banged up right now. You know, they've done a good job. But looking at that matchup, the West Virginia defense against this Kansas offense, uh, Kansas had a quarterback they had, wanted to red- Richard and Jalen Daniels, but um, he's over that now, and he's really probably their best player on offense, I feel like. Uh, he's a guy that can hurt you on with his legs or with his arm, but he's a solid quarterback. Uh, so that's something Kansas can do because you've seen them. You know, they put up, what, 57 against Texas, and um, they're giving up a lot of yards, but their offense is scoring a lot too. So if our defense can hold that offense, I like our chances because it's weird to say, but this Kansas offense uh, can put up some points, don't you think, Bradley? Yeah, and I think that that's going to be the the one telltale sign of this game is, if, our, like I said, if our defense can say – you know, on their toes and really keep them in check, which they have done all year. But we're really hurting back there in the defensive backfield. I mean, we just don't have the depth that we need. And so the more players have gotten hurt, it's just weakened our defense so much. And they're tired and they're beat up and they're banged up. Even the people that are still healthy probably aren't healthy. Um, What is super, super strong on that side, though, is Kansas is in the bottom of the Big 12. And he's they're the bottom three on – offensive rushing and they're in the bottom they're the last in the big 12 at passing so i definitely don't think that they're going to be that great of an offense and i think that our defense is way better than their offense so i think that we could really you know if we can play up to our standard then i don't think we're going to have that hard of a time stopping their offense right i believe in the defense you know fully especially after I was worried last week, even though, you know, Bijan Robinson was out. I knew Texas had some good running backs, and they did get the run game going a little bit. But I think even with a banged-up team, you know, you're playing Scotty Young essentially at a linebacker, basically playing a dime package all game, so you're really small. But uh, I think that they've impressed me with how they've still been able to take those injuries, you know, to kind of take them head on and uh, still continue to play good defense. And I think that they will be able to do that against Kansas. And to me, that'll probably be like one of the big differences in the, in the game because I think West Virginia, we've seen them a couple times now uh, since the bye week score 30, you know, 38 against Iowa State, 31 last week. I think we should see West Virginia be able to score 30 points again against Kansas. So if West Virginia defense could do what they do and hold them, you know, in the 20s, I think West Virginia can win the game. Yeah, and um, it seems to be that Kansas does have pretty good protection. On the other hand, talking about sacks, Kansas has given up the least amount of sacks in the Big 12. So it means that their offensive linemen are definitely doing their job um, and, you know, protecting that quarterback and giving him time. So it's really going to be on our DBs to make sure that they're locking up these receivers and making sure that they're not just getting, you know. I think the last game was the first game. I don't know if they had – I don't know if we had a blown assignment touchdown. I know they had the one to – worthy over the top but i think that was just a good play by him i don't think that was a blown assignment so i think i'd been talking about that a couple weeks ago yeah i was talking about that a couple weeks ago that i just wanted to see a game where we didn't give up uh a broken play touchdown so i don't think that we did that last weekend and we won so yeah that's it they was uh that was the good thing i think we you know a lot of people talk about it west virginia played complimentary football in that game and i think that's what neil brown wants to do people want to talk about what's his identity that's what he wants to do he wants his defense to complement his offense and i think like in that game in the iowa state game a um, little bit in the tcu game you've seen like what his offense can be like when the offensive line's gelling when all the parts are working together when you're not turning the ball over when you're playing mistake free and he's making good decisions you know game management wise which is something, you know, people were kind of worried about was all kinds of penalties and all that. But, you know, I think we only had like, what, three or four penalties, no turnovers. So that's kind of like the ideal, like, Neil Brown type of game, I think, uh, that we saw against Texas and, of course, like Iowa State as well. But um, moving forward, hopefully we'll get to see more of those. But I know we talked about the matchups a little bit here. I know we're going to get into uh, key to victory predictions here in a bit. But before I did look through, uh, since we're right here, this lap being the final game of the regular season, wanted to talk some numbers a little bit. I looked through the Big 12 Conference stats. Uh, here's some numbers mm-hmm. that West, where West Virginia players ranked that, you know, what 
a lot of them were surprising to me uh, preseason. You know, wouldn't have expected. Uh, number one being Jarrett Deggy currently leads the Big 12 in passing yards, 2,738. Um, Letty Brown seventh in rushing with 909. And just to show you how much the Big 12's changed into more of a running and defensive conference, the leading passer only has 2,700 yards, and there is – Five 1,000-yard rushers with two others probably going to go over 1,000 in Letty, Letty Brown and Kennedy Brooks. So you're probably talking seven 1,000-yard rushers in this conference. So that really just kind of shows you how that that's flipped. And then receiving-wise, uh, Winston Wright, eighth in the Big 12, 643 yards, and Bryce Ford Wheaton, 11th with 560 yards. And then also Josh Chandler Samito tied for the lead in tackles in the Big 12 conference with 96. So he's going to have over 100 tackles this season. Heck of a year for Samito. He's also tied with – uh, Kenny Logan, who plays for Kansas, so a uh, solid tackler there on Kansas' side as well. But uh, anything in those numbers stick out that you want to address there? I just thought it was uh, something we could talk about here late season. Yeah, I think it's still impressive that Jarrett Dagey has been as good as he has been this year with uh, just getting yards because it just does – it never feels like he's putting up those kind of yards. And I guess it's mostly because um, a lot of his passes are kind of short passes. I mean, we get a lot of – a lot of yards after the catch or we're just getting, you know, a solid 10 to 15 yards in there, but it kind of adds up over time. Um, but yeah, I think it's been super crazy that the big 12 has been such a rushing con or running, running conference this year. I mean, running backs have really yeah. dominated the big 12 this year between, you know, Brees Hall and uh, B. John Robinson, Letty Brown, uh, Zach yeah, Evans, Zach is that Evans, his name? Du was uh, Evans for TCU. It's been crazy. Yeah, it's just, it just seems like every single school has a good um, a good running back back there, you know. And it's kind of sad that Letty Brown couldn't really establish himself this year because of our offensive line. But um, it's it's still still super impressive. Um, yeah, that's 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 really what I wanted yeah, I to think, hit on. Uh, Letty, you know, if the offensive line would have been, you know. Better off earlier, you know, Nestor had the hand injury. Wyatt Milan was a true freshman trying to play. I think he's really hit his stride late, like I said, after that bye week when that offensive line seems like they've been gelling a little bit. But at least I think the good side of it is 903 going into the final uh, – voice crack there – 903 going into the final game of the regular season. I think that there's a good chance he gets over 1,000. And I'm predicting that he will against against Kansas. And if not, uh, hopefully we win that game. And in the bowl game, he definitely would. But I think for West Virginia, the one thing is you probably want your – leading receivers to have a little bit more higher in the yardage total, maybe have them seven, 800. You'd love to have 2,000 yard receivers, ideally, of course, but five, 600 is not bad to have two up there right around the top 10 in the conference. And I think um, Daigie, like you said, he's had a really good year, but he's also been sacked a lot, which goes back to the young offensive line. He's been sacked the most in the conference, and I believe he's thrown the most interceptions. So that's the thing. If he can eliminate those mistakes, he can be a pretty good quarterback. Um, I, seen, I don't know if you've seen, but the WVU or football, WVU sports put out, uh, that after the Texas game, he actually moved to fifth all time in uh, passing yards in school history. He's got over six thousand now. Yeah, yeah sixty one forty three right now. So um, if he does come back, which you know we all kind of think it's looking like he might, and he does end up getting that job, uh, you could be talking about one of the highest in school history passing yards wise. If he throws for another, you know, close to three thousand again, like it's, it looks like he's going to go over three thousand this year. Yeah, for sure. And that's something I wouldn't have predicted preseason. You know, I think that we had – I think actually I did say that he would, but, uh, I, you know, I'm talking about like once the season started, I definitely didn't think that he was having that good of a year and here late in the year when I've seen him put up the numbers and stuff. I'm like, well, he actually isn't doing too bad then, I guess. But also I think it shows that we hadn't had the running game a lot earlier in the season. That's when he put up a lot of those numbers. But if you can get that and get the running game going um, in the future, I think that this offense can really turn a corner next year, you know, more than some people realize. Yeah, for sure. And I think that it's just coming into the season, we thought the offense was going to be way more improved. A lot of that's because of the coach speak over the summer. But, you know, we see what they were seeing in practice when the offensive linemen are playing up to their ability. And so it's not crazy to think that we could make a huge leap in our offensive production next year. We just got to hope that we don't drop off on the defensive side. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Because you're going to be really young in that secondary. I'm expecting West Virginia to go out and hit the transfer portal, maybe bring in a couple safeties or something because you're going to be extremely young in that secondary next year if not. But um, that's that's like I wanted to go back, and there's one more uh, thing I wanted. I think Jacoby Spells definitely comes in and starts, though. I think that he's going to get uh, starting time the second he comes on. That's Kansas. true. That's true. He could snag one of those starting safety jobs easily, I think, um, you know, if that's what he's – I know they're projecting him as a corner, but if they need a safety to get on the field immediately, uh, why not? 
Yeah, for sure. But then one more thing I want to talk about while we're talking about this and the future of the offense. And, you know, I know I talked about Texas kind of being the ideal uh, Neil Brown, like offensive game, what you kind of want to see. And uh, that just wanted me to bring up this piece of thing also from Jed Drenning, of course. And he says, WV has played 88 games as a Big 12 member. 21 times they committed zero turnovers. 14 times doing it with three or four penalties. 13 times they've ran 87-plus offensive plays. And four times they've converted 12-plus third downs. To yesterday against Texas, well, not yesterday now, but when the tweet came out, obviously, uh, was the first time that they've done all of those things in one yeah. game. So that's like when you talk about Neil Brown, the guy that we thought we'd be getting detail oriented, you know, a team that doesn't beat themselves. I think like that's the ideal thing there. They had zero turnovers, less than three penalties, high amount of plays in 87 and converted on a high percentage of the third downs. I think that's like the ideal Neil Brown offensive game. Yeah. And I think another uh, identifying quality of Neil Brown offense is what it's starting to seem is Neil Brown is a master at controlling time. I mean, it seems like every other game, especially the games that we're really controlling, we seem to be controlling the tempo of the game. I mean, it's not too often that you see Neil Brown in there, you know, getting beat on time of possession. Usually time of possession, Neil Brown is just chewing that clock up. I mean, I think this weekend we had the ball literally for almost three quarters worth of the game, you know, and that's, it's it's hard for another team to be in a game when they're only getting to play one quarter. Very true, very true. Which uh, that kind of leads me into uh, our key to victory against Kansas because mine is. Uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and give mine, and then we, that way we can get into it, and you can uh, comment on it if you want, and then or get into yours right away either way. But my key to victory against Kansas is uh, getting off to a fast start. You know, we've talked about the 100 yards rushing and Neil Brown, West Virginia being undefeated. But I didn't realize until watching that Texas game that uh, Neil Brown as a head coach in general is 40 and four when he has a halftime lead. So I think getting out to a fast start and, you know, jumping on somebody early and having that advantage going in the second half is a big thing for Neil Brown. Cause now after that game, now 41 and four as a head coach, when he has a half uh, a lead in the first at going into halftime rather. So to me, my key to victory against Kansas, I think, uh, jump out on them early, you know, maybe get a 14, 10, 14 point lead going into half. And I think, uh, you go bowling. Yeah, I, that's a really good point. And I think that that's super impressive. I mean, that's a crazy, insane yeah. stat anyway. There's the fact that Neil Brown usually doesn't throw away games. He can usually hold on to him if he gets up there. Yeah. So that's really comforting to see going forward. And I think that that is a good indicator of, uh, you know, Dale Brown's future. If we're up at halftime, then it's looking pretty good for us. Um, my key to victory, I think I'm still going to go with the rushing game. I think that Letty Brown's going to have a heck of a day. And I think that Kansas right now is allowing almost 250 rushing yards per game. And so I wouldn't be surprised if Letty Brown, if our offensive line can come out clicking again, you know, building on that momentum and they're healthy and filling themselves this weekend, I could see Letty Brown almost hitting 200 yards this weekend by himself. I like that. I like that prediction. I think that it's going to be a big game for Letty. And I would love to see him hit that. You know, we uh, put out a tweet during the game. I was like, because at the time he had like 27, 25 carries and the fourth quarter was still early. I said, are we about to see a 30 carry Letty, Letty Brown game? Then at the end, I was able to retweet him like, yep, we saw it, you know, 33 carries, 150 yards. I think that's the first time we've seen a 30 carry Letty Brown game. And I don't know if we've seen a 200 yard Letty Brown game. I don't believe we ever have. So may as well in his final two games have his first 30 yard, uh, 30 carry game and his first 200 yard game back to back. I'd love to see it. Yeah, for sure, and I think that he's earned it. I mean, he's been a really big, crucial piece this year. I wish he could have gotten uh, a little bit better send-off than what he is getting, but I would love to see him hit that 1,000-yard mark. And then, um, you know, I, I think it's also encouraging, maybe if he doesn't hit that 1,000-yard mark, he comes back for the bowl game because, yeah. you know, you never know anymore with some of these guys not wanting to participate in a bowl game. So Yeah, because we, we could use that and stuff uh, for sure. I wouldn't be mad at him if he didn't because I understand, you know, running backs – uh, minimum number of hits, or, you know, carries they've got in them, and he wants to save some for the NFL or what have you. But I, I seem like if I'm predicting it, that he's the type of player that would that would play in it. Just just predicting it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, if not, I would love to see Tony Mathis. I love the way. Yeah, that I guy think runs. I think he's got a bright future. He looks so good. He's got some explosiveness to him. He's got a lot of pop. No, yeah, for sure. Him him and Justin Johnson are going to be a good one two punch. Yeah, uh, Jalen Anderson still, you know, he finally made it to campus redshirt this year, so I think you got three good backs next year. Yeah, and then maybe like uh you had brought up in our group chat the other day, maybe we can squeeze Ramon Brown yeah. from uh it's a possibility. 
Virginia Tech with their coaching yep, shakeup. I think it's definitely a possibility. I think so. I think especially because he would be the only running back in the class here, and I think that's one of the reasons he didn't commit in the beginning was because of Justin Williams. And now with Justin Williams out of the picture, I think that uh, that's something you got to look at for sure. Yeah. Uh, speaking of recruiting, uh, signing day is December 15th, I think it starts or 16th. So uh, be on the lookout after the season, um, even though the season will be over. You know, maybe I don't know if we're going to play their bowl game there. Then by not, if they make a bowl game, uh, but we'll have a signing day recap up. Um, as always, follow us on Twitter at WVU Country Roads. Uh, CRW Hoops, I have a couple episodes dropping this week as well, in, in addition to this Kansas preview. So be on the lookout for those. And then, of course, following the Kansas game, uh, check out our social media where we'll announce where our live stream reaction, what day it'll be on, usually on Sunday. Um, but we'll announce what time and then you can watch that on YouTube or Facebook and then we flip it and have it here on the podcast as well which you can find on any podcast platform just search Country Roads webcast Uh, with that being said as always we'll close this out with our predictions for the final West Virginia football game of the regular season Uh, West Virginia at 5 and 6 Kansas at 2 and 9 night game in Lawrence Uh, does West Virginia get to a bowl game Bradley uh, and get to 6 and 6 with a win over Kansas Uh, what's your prediction? I think we are going bowling, boys, or Jordan uh, fans, <laughs> anybody listening out there. I definitely think WV's going bowling. I think that, uh, you know, Kansas has definitely looked better this year, but I still just can't convince myself that we're a worse team than Kansas is. I mean, we got a Texas team on a rebound from a bad loss that came in and played real nasty football. And, you know, um, Kansas, you know, they pulled out their one good win against Texas, and then they kind of uh, kept it close this weekend but still didn't get it done. And I just don't think that they have minutes to keep up with us. And I think that we come out, and if our defense can play the way that I think they can, I think that we got a good chance. And I'm going to go WVU 35, Kansas City. Wow, the blowout victory. I like that. I like that prediction. Yeah, I was looking yeah. at early lines today. We're recording this. I think that our team is really clicking right now. And yeah, I think yeah, I think so too. I think that the offense is good. offense is hitting its stride right now, and I and I'd love to see the blowout. But I, I was gonna say I was looking at uh, the early line uh, for this game. I know we're recording this early in the week, so it'll probably change before the game gets here. I don't know which way it'll go up or down, but I think it was either fourteen and a half or fifteen and a half. So two touchdowns is what West Virginia's favored here on the road. So I think the experts kind of are agreeing with you that it could uh, be a blowout type game. But I think Kansas has shown some things they may stick in it. Uh, but uh, I'm with you. I think West Virginia goes bowling. You know, I'm finally predicting a win here. First time in a while. I feel like I've done that in a while. But uh, I think West Virginia beats Kansas. I got West Virginia also at 35, and I'm going to go 35-21 um, over Kansas with the 14-point win. So uh, hopefully West Virginia will be 6-6, six and six and we'll be back to talk about it on the Kansas Reaction Show. Uh, check out our uh, – Facebook and our YouTube to see that live streaming. But before we get out of here, uh, any final thoughts, anything you want to add or talk about before we uh, wrap this one up, Bradley? Yeah, keep it more spicy. Letty Brown sitting 200 yards mm, I like that. and two touchdowns. And Caden Prather's getting two of the other touchdowns, and I don't care where the other touchdown well, I'd comes from. I'd be so hyped for Caden Prather's first career touchdown. I'm ready to see it. Mm. It's, it's going to happen. He's he, He's been syncing up, and it's just going to – I just need J.E. to throw it to him. <laughs> right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, I guess that will do it here for the Kansas preview on the Country Roads webcast. Um, as I said, follow us on Twitter at WVU Country Roads. Uh, check us out on Facebook and subscribe on our YouTube, which we've been getting that video side going here in the fourth year. Um, hopefully this isn't our last uh, preview show. Hopefully we'll be previewing a bowl game as we're predicting that we will be. But uh, we'll have another reaction show, at least one more, with the Kansas reaction live streaming on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, like I said, hopefully we'll have a bowl game preview and a bowl game reaction as well. So hopefully not the last, but last of the regular season, at least here with the previews. But that being said, thanks for tuning in to the Country Roads webcast. As always, I'm your host, Jordan Cruz. For Bradley and the absent Stephen, but always here, present in our hearts. Um, until next time, let's go, Mountaineers. Really wanna know, then come on, let's go. Take a stroll down those-